Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Get ready for a story of conflict, catharsis, and coming to terms with past demons in the least likely of settings, but after a short pause. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Karen, a former boss. I was in a local red big box store just a couple days ago with the bullseye after a face-to-face -face interview. I was in a black short sleeve collared shirt, black slacks, and nice shoes, so as far as I know, not an employee uniform of red big box store. As per a previous post, I'm a bigger guy, have some mental health issues, and don't reach well to being manhandled. I also don't like people in general and avoid them as much as I can. Thank you, food service and retail jobs of my college years. So here I am grabbing a few last minute items my wife asked me to get for our Thanksgiving dinner as we weren't going to any family or friend gatherings. I'm in the grocery section looking for a specific gravy that cannot be substituted. When the call of Karen is heard, excuse me, I turn to see someone who I had hoped and prayed I'd never come across again my boss from my time working at a sub shop in a large truck stop gas station. To say I loathed her doesn't do my feelings justice. She made my five months at that job utter hell, all because I refused to sleep with her since she went through the male employees at the whole station like wildfire. I quit, never giving her the satisfaction of firing me, which I heard ate at her. Me is me, old boss is Karen me, sees Karen, and roll my eyes, and speaking without a thought, oh god, you. Karen turns that shade of red I know so well, that's not how you speak to a paying customer. Me, I'm a paying customer too, not an employee. Duh. Karen, bullcrap, now help me or I'll get you fired. Me, anger and snark fully powered up and activated, oh you'd like that so much you dumb bee, wouldn't you? Karen squints eyes, who the hell do you think you are? Me, I'm a customer looking for gravy. I dramatically gesture to the gravy in front of me. What are you, some washed up mattress warmer? I will say at this point, I see the gravy I need and grab it and put it in my cart and turn to leave. She reaches out, grabs my arm, squeezes tight, and tried to turn me to face her. I do turn, but under my own power to get my arm back, and she stumbles forward but catches herself on a shelf. Karen, you tried to make me fall, you lousy know-nothing. I'm going to call the police and press charges. Me, no, I made you let me go, and please do it. Call the po-po-ho, call him. It's not my fault you're so full of crap that you can't balance. Well, Karen didn't take kindly to that and slapped me, hard enough that it made my head ring. Not a good idea on her part, since I acted before my brain kicked back into gear and I decked her with a left hook. She fell into the shelves, knocked out from the punch. My brain kicked in as she rolled on her back as she hit the floor. I was shaking while I looked at my hand. I don't hit anyone unless I'm defending myself, so it was momentarily jarring to realize I actually hit someone without realizing I had. I also hadn't noticed the employee that had come into the aisle either. I was so focused on Karen. She radioed for a manager and security as she ran to Karen and got her into the sitting position as Karen came to really dazed. She actually asked where she was, sounding drunk. Manager and security showed up a few minutes later and asked what happened, and I told them my part, as well as pointed to the cameras to back me up. The employee verified that she heard the back and forth from the aisle over and came when she heard me say I was getting out of Karen's grip. Karen finally came to, trying to stand and slapping the employee's hands away, screaming that I attacked her and she wanted me arrested. Well, after footage reviews and ambulance called, cops arrived as well, Karen got awarded a ban from the store for attacking a fellow customer. I decided not to press charges because the punch was 21 years in the making and felt good to be honest. Cops asked if I was sure, but let it go when they saw the look on my face as I declined since at this point my anxiety was starting to hit pretty hard after the adrenaline crash. I just wanted out of there, fast. I could feel the urge to lose it, cry like a baby coming. Seriously, anxiety attacks are horrible. And I was honestly worried that this one would cause a panic attack. I'm still kind of shocked that a panic attack didn't happen. 
The manager gave me their discount at checkout. I refused to allow them to give it to me for free. Yes, I'm that kind of person. And apologized for the whole thing. I left, drove about halfway home, and pulled over onto the highway shoulder to just sob and let the anxiety out. When I got home, wife was just happy that I wasn't hurt or arrested. She playfully joked that I can't go anywhere without her, which I had to laughingly agree to. I hope I get the job, though. The perfect storm of getting the TKO punch an obnoxious raging a-hole in the face and still coming out ahead of the game in the eyes of the law. Bully had it coming. And our second story. Same punishment for being five minutes late as being three hours late? Sure, no problem. So I'm working for a low-level corporation, about 450 employees. I've been there for five years and have risen to the top of my department's productivity levels. I mention this as it does pertain to the story. Management had a policy that latecomers would be penalized, but that lateness could be excused under some circumstances. I was good at my job, and I actually loved doing it, so I was more or less a dream employee. I always showed up to work 20 to 30 minutes early because I liked to sit in the lunchroom and prepare for my day. Management knew I was almost always early, so if I was late from time to time, and such instances were rare, they'd let it slide as there was always a valid reason. Now, for some other employees, this latitude wasn't applied. Chronically late employees would get written up and not have their constant lateness excused. They'd complain, of course, but management was firm. They ran an actual meritocracy where more productive employees would experience preferential treatment. Then the business gets sold and we get new management. An international corporation only interested in buying us up, stripping us down, and selling off the company. Of course, they denied this constantly, but the fact that over the next two years, they stripped us down and sold off the company proved they were lying. New management comes in and has to make a bunch of idiotic changes. One of those changes is that no reasons for being late are accepted regardless of validity. Anyone five plus minutes late for work will be written up. So at the team meeting where this is explained, I asked, so if someone is five minutes late and someone else is three hours late, the punishment is the same? And they said yes. From that day on, I stopped coming in early. I'd still head to work at my usual time, but I sat in a local coffee shop instead of my work's lunchroom. This meant that my work missed out because in the past, I would often help out answering questions, even start work early if needed, because I love my job and the old management were wonderful bosses. No more of that under new management. In fact, if something happened, like unexpectedly bad traffic, and I was going to end up being a few minutes late, I just say F it. If being three hours late is the same punishment as five minutes late, I just decide to come in later. I'd call work to tell them I was delayed, then go out and have a leisurely meal in a restaurant, or run some personal errands, go shopping, even see a movie, etc. Depending on my mood and how crappy the new management had been lately, what would have been, say, a seven minute lateness on my part would end up seeing me roll in three hours late. Sure, it cost me a few bucks, but I made almost as much in bonuses than I did in hourly salary, so missing out on a few hours here and there didn't bother me too much. I'd come in three or four hours late, and my new bosses would be fuming. Nothing they could do, though, but write me up for the basic tardy, same as they would have if I was five minutes late. I don't know how your brain let you do this, but I'm glad it did. I would have felt guilty the entire time, which sucks. And our next story. Group of kids gets a car full of revenge. So my SO and I are at our local strip mall doing some shopping. The shopping plaza has a movie theater in it as well. As we were walking into the parking lot, this brand new Silver Skyon XB with dealer plates still whips into the parking lot. All four windows of the Skyon go down and a 16-year-old pops out of each one. They each were armed with squirt guns and water balloons. First target, 90-year-old woman. Splat, right on her walker. She's soaked to the bone. They spray anyone within distance of the car before hucking a few more balloons into the distance. The tires screeched, and they were on the open road again. This whole ordeal took less than 45 seconds. The family of the old woman helps her to a bench. Everyone else is fine, but pissed and wet. We got in our car and took off. 
Months later, my friends are out at that same movie theater seeing some movie. Right as the credits roll, four kids stand up in the front row with water guns and just start blasting the audience. They laugh and run off out the main entrance. My friend was in the second row and was so very pissed and wet. She grabbed her purse and ran out the emergency exit. Right when she gets to the front of the theater, she sees these kids run out and jump in a brand new Silver Sky on XB with dealer plates. My friend is smart. She always brings a big bottle of soda to the movie theater, so she pulled out this almost full bottle of soda, ran up to the window of the Skyon, and just doused these guys with Diet Coke. The whole bottle emptied inside that pretty new car. She said she just threw the empty bottle on the driver's lap and said, Have a good night, guys. Seeing four idiots suddenly stand up in a theater and start spraying the audience with something gun-shaped would be rather alarming. And our last story. Fake HOA Uncovered. I didn't have a problem with HOAs and even joined the board, but now I'm uncomfortable in my own neighborhood and feel like a pariah. Once I started researching HOAs and realized how little this group was doing and how poorly they were following basic HOA management, when I finally procured the bylaws, I realized the HOA rules they were constantly referring to did not exist. Suddenly, the president resigned. There was a new president who I had never seen in a meeting in 10 years. They said to the board dues were donations, but didn't tell the residents. Then at the meeting, the old pres, who was still pretty much running things, says, We aren't an HOA? What? Whoever said that? The meeting we were in was actually titled in the invite as HOA Quarterly Meeting. There are a ton of examples of HOA fakery. Found out the common areas are actually city-designated parks. I resigned and sent them a note that they should talk to an attorney, grateful to know I don't have to deal with them. The dues were super low, only 200 a year for 200 townhouses, but some of the board wanted to rewrite the mysterious bylaws, including extra oversight of the house's exteriors. Now there's gossiping and weirdness, and I suspect I'm the crazy troublemaker. The rest of the board is just being completely silent. The main characters are pretending nothing was ever amiss, just flat out lying. The new president is gossiping about me. The residents don't know or don't care. I have a feeling gossip is spreading to make sure I don't start a revolt. I just wish there was no such thing as HOAs. Update. I have some information and documents if I wanted to file a complaint and escalate. I do think the treasurer and president were lying to the board regarding the bank accounts. They've stopped saying they were an HOA and seem to understand dues should be voluntary as of the last convo before I quit. Empowered by the evidence in my possession and driven by a desire for transparency and accountability, I decided to take action. Consulting with a legal expert, I filed a formal complaint against the HOA detailing the inconsistencies, misrepresentations, and potential mismanagement of funds. The complaint caught the attention of local media, sparking a broader investigation into the practices of HOAs within the community. As the legal process unfolded, the evidence I provided became a catalyst for change. The court found significant breaches of trust and mismanagement by the HOA's board, particularly the president and treasurer. Their actions, while not criminally liable, warranted legal consequences including mandated oversight and restitution in the form of community service and financial penalties to fund local improvements. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.